God Almighty, Lord of heaven and earth, we come to you this day just as we are. We come to you because you are good and right. We come that your way may be known here in this house as well as on this earth as it is in your heaven. You make all things possible for us. You are the first cause in our lives. You are the one who wakes us up. You give us rest by night. You supply our tables so that we have overflowing cups. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and your goodness. We thank you that you are with us in the good times and bad times. You are with us when things are going all right and we don't quite know what's going to happen tomorrow. You neither, you neither leave us nor do you abandon us, but you claim us as your own children. And you are our God. Our eyes look up to you, Lord. Our hearts and minds trust you right now. We believe you. We believe your word. So come now, Lord, inspire us. Open us up to your inspiration. Give us a sense of joy that the world can't take away. And Lord, in this time of worship, let us feel your presence. Hear your spirit. And be able to leave this place and tell the whole world you are alive and death can't hold you down. For these things and so many more, we pray in your powerful name.
closer to when God is going to do something here at St. Matthew's. Amen? Amen. Amen. He's going to do a wonderful, marvelous work. We just need to be in prayer. We need to praise him. And we need to be able to listen, but not only listen, but hear what God has to say to us. We need to listen because the master is calling. Just hold. 
we pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. This has been the word of God <laughs> for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God.
Amen. Amen. Now, it's important to realize that what Jesus is trying to teach his disciples is, at its heart, prayer is simple. And the purpose of prayer is to move us closer to God. Is to get us close to the one who made us and knows all about us. And the way to get there is not through complications, but through keeping things simple. Not simplistic, but simple. Simple means I don't overly complicate stuff. Simplistic means I think in terms of black and white. I break stuff down to a level that they can never, it never fits with reality. Simplistic thinking is like this. Women have a certain role in the world. And they should keep that role always. And if they get up in it and step out of that role, they're no longer being good women. That's simplistic thinking. Simplistic thinking may be like this. Uh, the Bible says, when you pray, say, our Father. Simplistic thinking says, you got to always say, our Father. <laughs> simple thinking is like this. Keeping it simple means, well, the Bible says, our Father. But in reality, fatherhood, in the image of Father, isn't comforting to everybody. There are those out there who've had horrible experiences with their fathers. There are some who've been abused by their fathers, neglected by their fathers, pushed down by their fathers. And for them, the image of father, trying to pray to a father just is not going to get them And Jesus is saying the purpose of prayer is to get you to God. And because the day and time in which he was born, the term they used was Abba. And Abba was a word that children used to refer to their father. It's like Papa. So some men have prayed, our Papa in heaven. How would be thy name? But it's also right that the Spirit has a way of helping people get to God any way they need to get to God. Some may say, redeem or sustain them. Some may say, mother. Some may say, spirit. Some may say, creator. Jesus is not trying to lock us into a term. But simply trying to reveal, this is how we begin to pray. We give God honor for who God is. And we pray that God will be revealed in the midst of our prayer. So we pray, hallowed be thy name. Please reveal yourself to us. Give us a safe space in which we can learn. Give us a safe space in which we can know. Give us a safe space in which we can get closer to who you are. Prayer attempts to break down the complications in our lives and set right the relationships and how we relate to one another. First with God and then with one another. Now, we make relationships very complicated. Mostly because we're scared and mostly because we don't want to lose. It's interesting how when people come together to solve a problem, there are usually groups of people who've met before the big meeting, solving the problems in their little meeting. So when they come together to solve the problems, they start fighting with one another about how they already done solved it. And they don't understand why folk don't disagree with them because they've already had their little meeting and got stuff all fixed and it's got to be this way. Do you know we sometimes have to go to? We have our little meeting before the prayer. Where we start to tell God how it ought to be. And rather than letting God reveal God's self, we start revealing to God our plan for the universe. We start to tell God, this is what I'm praying for, and you just <coughs> check off my list. And you get it done as I want you to get it done, then you and me are going to be all right. And Jesus said, no, that's not how you pray. When you pray, begin like this. You who created me. You who 
know all about me. You who made me, reveal yourself. And as you reveal who you are, I will begin to understand who I am. I will begin to see myself in your light. And I will begin to say, I honor you for who you are. I will drop all pretense. I will drop all need for power. I will drop all need to control. I will let you be you so I can be me. And this takes practice. It takes practice to let God get that close to you and you get that close to God. It takes practice to learn how to let go of control and to let God be God. It takes a daily regimen of prayer, of simple, heartfelt, honest, genuine prayer to say, God is God and I am who I am because God is God. It takes, a, it takes, it takes practice every day to let God get that close. <coughs> and interesting enough, when we start letting God get that close, we start letting other folk get close too. When you let God start revealing who God is, we feel much, how can I say this? We feel bolder. We feel empowered to reveal who we actually are. And let me tell you, revealing who you are in this world is not easy because the world does not want to know who you are. It really does. The world wants you to jump in line, keep in line, and do your part to keep things as they are. If you start expressing too much individuality, the world tries to slap you back in place. You keep that at home. We don't want to know about that. What we want is for you to be a good little soldier in our army. We want you to follow orders the way you should follow orders. And to some extent, it has to be that way. You can't have 10 people trying to run an organization. Somebody's going to have to be designated leader. When we say designated leader, it means somebody is going to have to be the one that does some thinking around there. Somebody's going to be the one that keeps the vision in place. Somebody's going to be the one that inspires others. Somebody's going to be the one that thinks make sure things are organized. But in the midst of all of that, the leader also has to be someone who is open to hearing creative ideas from others. From not being a general that simply dictates, but to be one who receives. One who's creative. One who sees possibilities coming from everywhere. And when we pray to God that God's kingdom comes, when we say, hallowed be thy name, we give you proper place in this world. We're saying, God, we will let you be you so that we can be who we are and we will follow you, Lord. And this is the good thing about following God. When you follow God, you get to be very creative just as you are. You get to be fully who you are because God accepts you as you are. You get to be more creative than God than you can be anywhere else in the world. God knows you and receives you. God says, be you. Amen. This is the one place you can come where you're going to put a mask on you and a face in front of me. You can come to this place and be fully you because I know you and I love you. Just as you are. Yeah, and we get to trust God over time as we pray with God in the same way we get to trust one another over time as we spend time together. Prayer is spending time with God that builds trust. That says, now that you know me and I know you and I know that you know who I am, I am more willing to listen to you, to be influenced by you, to gain strength from you, because I know you walk with me. 
anybody who's going to be brave in this world has friends. We are only brave when we know there's somebody who's going to have our back no matter what. We are only brave when we know that somebody is going to support us even as we fall and is there to catch us so the fall won't be so hard. We are only brave when we know that somebody in this world loves us and cares for us and knows us and says that no matter what other people say about us, I'm not going to join in that mess because I really know you. We're only brave. Because we live in a community where we are supported. If we had to do it all on our own, nobody would ever step up. Nobody would ever risk anything. We're able to risk because we're not by ourselves. I've never gotten so brave as to after I got married. I didn't know it was going to be that way. But somehow, having somebody who I'm committed to and who is committed to me changed me. It enabled me to let, get up and say things and do things I would not have done if I was by myself. It happens in friendships. When you got somebody who is your friend and you know that they are with you and you know they're not going to talk bad about you, you know they're not going to betray you, it gives you courage to walk in the world and stand up. In prayer, when you know the one who set the stars in their place, made the oceans roll, caused the birds to fly and the flowers to grow, when you know somebody who puts air in your lungs and wakes you up in the morning, when you know somebody who supplies food on your table because they made a way for you to have a job, they made a way for you to get your education, they made a way for you to say everything's going to be all right, you know this somebody who even death cannot defeat, but who says, if you walk with me, if you go with me, even though they push you down, I'm going to show you how to rise up. When you know that somebody, and you're able to say, reveal yourself to me from day to day, you get brave. And you know what you're brave to do? Have joy. To not be defeated by the mess of this world. <coughs> now we live in a strange time. A weird time. We live in a time where people can be targeted and shot simply because they come from a different country or speak a different language or have a different skin color. And on top of that, we live in a time when the same weekend that that happened, that our government raised people and arrest over 600 folk and leave their children with nobody to come home to. And we say, isn't that awful? But remember, that's not new for us. In the beginning of this country, we call it being sold down the river. Where mama and daddy could be sold to a new owner. And the children were left behind with the old owner. This has been our reality since the beginning of this country. We are cycling back around to a dark period. But I know somebody else who's cycling back around too. The same God who gave our ancestors strength. The same God who put us on that long road to freedom. The same God who said, you are my children and in you I am well pleased. And I'm going to let all my children come together one day. This same God is right here, right now. And this is why we say, Papa, Mama, Creator, Sustainer, Redeemer, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Reveal yourself, yes. and I will walk as you are. <coughs> In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.